Fantasy Football fam, what's going on? My name is Mitchell Renz. This is Fantasy Football AF, and I got an awesome show for you guys on tap today. I got some ways that, well, you can win your league. We got running back sleepers. I got some master debaters, and well, it's going to be an awesome, awesome show. So, as I always do, let's get the show going, Lena. Let's send it. But first, I need, to, I need you guys to know what exactly a fantasy football sleeper is because a lot of people might not know exactly what it is. So what is a sleeper? It's typically a late round pick or waiver wire option who exceeds statistical exp expectations and becomes a prominent option. The guy that I like to like a, make a reminder to, Alvin Kamara last year wasn't on a lot of boards, but he won a lot of people, a lot, a lot of people, including myself, a fantasy football league. That's a humble brag for me. The next term, next primer I got for you guys that you guys need to understand in the fantasy football world is what the heck is ADP? This report lists the average round in which a player is typically chosen during a fantasy football draft. So if you take a guy, let's say like, I don't know, Saquon Barkley in round one, pick 12, his ADP, guess what, is 1.12. Pretty simple, right? I think so as well. And why is this stuff important? Well, because finding sleepers late in your draft it's how you're gonna win your league, guys. You don't win your league in the first round. Congratulations if you picked, I don't know, Le'Veon Bell in the first round last year. That probably didn't win you your league. But if you picked a guy like Kareem Hunt in round eight or nine, that is the kind of picks that win you your league. So the objective of this show is to find guys who are going late in the rounds. All these guys right now are currently going after pick 90. So guys you can find late in drafts who are gonna help you win your league. So Lena, first guy I got that you should not sleep on. He is a running back. And his name is Naheem Hines. And this is a guy who I absolutely love. Fastest 40 time of the 2018 NFL Combine with that 4.38 blazing speed. And reports out of camp have all been positive with this guy. One of my favorite things about Hines is he's going to be able to add a lot of different dimensions to this Colts offense. Speaking of the Colts offense, though, this is ultimately going to come down, as my voice cracks there, to Andrew Luck. And hopefully I'll be lucky and that doesn't happen again. And maybe I should hydrate so it doesn't. Hang on. Hydration is key. So, why do I like Hines? Andrew Luck, if he plays all 16 games, this is gonna be a guy who's gonna be an absolute, I think, monster. I'm not a big fan of Marlon Mack, and I'm not a fan of the guy who, Wilkins, or whatever the heck his name is, obviously I can't even remember his name, he's not that important. Hines is a guy who's gonna be able to add a lot of different elements to this team. Dripping with speed, he's a good pass catcher, and if this Colts offense, because their defense isn't any good, this could lead to actually a lot of maybe potential garbage time points for a guy like Hines, and a lot of potential for him to catch a lot of balls. A guy who had caught 71% of his passes in college. So Hines is a guy you don't want to sleep on in this Colts backfield. Next sleeper I got for you guys coming up on the board is Frank Gore. Yeah, Frank Gore, the veteran, the old man. This is the craziest stat I've seen on Frank Gore. 1,200 total yards every year since 2005. What the heck were you doing in 2005? Comment that below. 2005, I was in fifth grade. I might have, nope, definitely didn't hit puberty yet. And I still had spiky hair like Aaron Carter from, did he, was he on Backstreet Boys? I don't even know. No, he wasn't. Lane is telling me no. Okay. So regardless, I don't know either. Frank Gore though is going to be a guy who you shouldn't sleep on. Why? Because right now he is the number one running back on the Dolphins depth chart. He's over Kenyon Drake. He's over Kalen Balaj. Frank Gore is a guy who every single year we're like, ah, he can't do it. Last year, 961 rushing yards, three touchdowns. And he's entering his 14th NFL season. It's not going to be pretty. I get it. It's not going to be pretty. But Frank Gore is a cougar that's still on the prowl. And he's still going to be a guy who's going to rack up those yards and rack up points on a really bad Dolphins team. And for right now, where he's going in drafts, super, super late, why not take a guy like Frank Gore? Right now, I'll take Frank Gore, who's listed, as I said before, RB1 on the team, over a guy like Kenyon Drake, who's going much, much higher in drafts. No thanks, guys. I'm going to take a guy like Frank Gore. Next guy I got coming up on the board, Donta. Foreman. This is a guy who I think is really interesting, right? So Lamar Miller has not been any good, I would say, over the past four years. So every single year since 2014, his yards per carry has dropped 5.1, 4.5, 4.0, 3.7. 4 he averaged 3.7 yards per carry last year. Lamar Miller is not any good, and I'm sick and tired of watching him clog up the holes when I could see a guy like Foreman be the lead running back on this Houston Texans offense, a Houston Texans offense that I project to be very good. A team that with a guy like Deshaun Watson, they're going to be able to run the ball. They're going to be able to do what they want. Foreman averaged 4.2 yards per carry last year and was head and shoulders much better than a guy like Lamar Miller. Lamar Miller didn't have a single run of over 20 yards last year. That's gross. That's 
That's almost as bad as, yeah, Miller Lite. Lamar Miller Lite is probably what I'm gonna call him. If you spell Miller Lite with L-I-T-E, get that beer out of here, that's a joke. Shout out to Mosaic IPA here in Texas. They have an awesome beer. You know what, that's Dante Foreman. That's the beer that I want because Lamar Miller is garbage. He's not any good. If I can get a guy like Foreman who's gonna be a potential lead back on a Texans offense, that's a sleeper I'm gonna buy into all day, every day. Foreman could be a guy to really keep an eye on in the upcoming season. Fantasy Football fam, I want to say thanks so much for tuning in to Fantasy Football AF. I'm your host, Mitchell Renz. You guys can follow me on Twitter, at MitchellRenz365. Why would you follow me? Well, for one, I think I'm an okay guy, and I produce, I'll say, pretty decent fantasy football content, but also if you like food, if you like beer like I do, I have a lot of hot takes on those as well. And, well, if you ever find yourself in the Dallas area, we have kegs at Chat Sports, and, uh, yeah, invitations open to anybody who follows me and, of course, subscribes to our awesome YouTube channel. All right, now I talked about some room or talked about some sleepers. Now I'm gonna get into another section that I like to call master debaters. And this is where we're just gonna debate topics that are going on in sports and in real life. And it's gonna be a lot of fun. And all you guys have to do is type in your comments below. The first one I got coming up on the board, master debaters, is a pretty interesting one. And it's one that I really want you to take a, you know, a real grasp on. You know, just really put your hands on it and really think about it. So, which quarterback will score more fantasy points in 2018? Drew Brees or Kirk Cousins? Now, I'm not going to give you my answer because, well, I don't think that's the way it should be. I'm going to give you the argument for both. Drew Brees is a guy who I think is going to bounce back. He had only 23 touchdowns last year, but he's, he's a guy who's had 5,000 passing yards five times. Five times. Only nine quarterbacks in NFL history, or it's only been done nine times. He's got five of them. I think the offense is going to be a lot better, so that's my argument for Brees. And then you look at a guy like Cousins. Cousins, a new team in Minnesota, a lot of options around him could have a lot of potential for scoring. So Drew Brees, Kirk Cousins, more fantasy points in 2018. Next one I got for you guys coming up on the board, do you pee in the shower? Well, if you do, type Y in for yes and type N for no. In college, I used to always say there's two kinds of people in the world. There's people who pee in the shower and there's people who lie about peeing in the shower. Because I'll tell you right now, sometimes I hold it just to pee in the shower. That's a fact. So do you guys pee in the shower? I wanna know. And I'm probably gonna have to pee after I drink this beer, no doubt about it. Next one, which running back will score more fantasy points in 2018? Zeke, Ezekiel Elliott, or David Johnson? Ezekiel Elliott is a guy who I've been thinking about, could be the best running back in the NFL right now. 25 games played, 25 touchdowns. Actually, in his career, he averages 100 rushing yards per game. That's insane, that's actually sickening. And he's a guy who his rookie year led the NFL in rushing. Why couldn't he do it you know, again this year? I mean, 2017, he averaged 98.3 rushing yards per game. Todd Gurley averaged only 87. Think about that. And then you got a guy like David Johnson, who played only one game last year, was productive, but then he got hurt. The year before that, 2,116 total yards and 20 touchdowns. That's insane. Like, that's insane, guys. Like, David Johnson's a monster. So, Ezekiel Elliott or David Johnson in 2018, who will score more fantasy points this upcoming season? The next one, do you use dating apps? I want to know from you guys. I'll be honest. Really proud, shout out to my roommate Cam Rogers went on a date the other day using a dating app. So if you guys use dating apps, type in a Y for yes or an N for no. I'll be honest, I use a bunch of them. I use them for social media. I use them, yeah, to meet hopefully my next wife. That would be dope or, or maybe just the next good time I'm gonna have. I actually have a date tonight who I met a girl on Hinge. Shout out to Hinge there, so uh, appreciate that. So do you guys use dating apps? I wanna know, type in Y for yes or N for no. All right, the last master debater I got for you guys. Which wide receiver will score more fantasy points this upcoming season? Julio Jones or Odell Beckham Jr.? This is an interesting one. So I understand the hype around Odell, right? But Odell's never finished as a top three wide receiver his entire career. Then you look at a guy like Julio Jones. He's finished, he's the only wide receiver the last three years, the only guy last three years to finish top three in receiving yards. And people are like, oh, Julio had a bad year. If 1,400 yards is a bad year, imagine what Julio can do in a good year. Think about it. He had only three touchdowns last year. I get it. But in 15 red zone targets, he had one touchdown. That number's going to go up. Julio's touchdowns are going to go up. But then you look at Odell's upside, it's an outstanding. And I understand that. But Julio Jones, Odell Beckham Jr., comment below which wide receiver will have more points in 2018. Fantasy Football fam, thank you so much for tuning in to Fantasy Football AF. I gave you guys my master debaters, dirty there I know, and then we talked about some sleepers. I got two more sleepers who are probably my two favorite guys that you should not sleep on. So without further ado, Lena, send me those guys. 
Awesome, Jamal Williams. Now, I had a guy in the fantasy industry kind of rip me a little bit for this one, and well, you know, so be it. Haters gonna hate, what are you gonna do? Aaron Jones suspended the first two weeks, right? The last seven weeks of 2017, he was a top eight running back, Jamal Williams. Let's not forget that. And sure, it was because a guy like Ty Montgomery was banged up, and Aaron Jones is banged up. I've heard it all, I get it. But for you to finish as a top eight running back over a seven weeks span, that's impressive. That's the guy who I'm gonna look at and who I'm gonna say that might, he might have fantasy upside. Now, do I think he's really all that great from a talent standpoint? No, I, I don't. I don't think Jamal Williams is that talented. In fact, I think Aaron Jones and Montgomery are more talented. However, a guy like Jamal Williams is by far the best pass blocking running back on that team, which may keep him on the field because I don't know if you remember a guy named Aaron Rodgers. He got hurt last year and well, they were not as good. Um, we're not as good without him, shocker, right? So if Jamal Williams can keep a guy like Aaron Rodgers healthy, maybe he's gonna be on the field more. And also, he didn't fumble a single time last year at 178 touches. Only five running backs the last two years have, can actually say that. So he's dependable, and he's just gonna get you yards. I think that's what the Packers need because this is a team who's gonna be around Aaron Rodgers. So if Jamal Williams can just be productive and not lose them games, I think that could get him on the field. And if you're telling me right now I can get a running back going as late as what Jamal Williams is, who could maybe see 200 touches in an Aaron Rodgers-led offense? Yeah, sign me up for that all day of the week. Cheers to you, Jamal. Had an awesome time with you at the Fantasy Football Convention. Last sleeper I got for you guys coming up on the board, and it's an interesting one. This guy is uh, close, near and dear to my heart. He won me a fantasy football title a few years ago, and his name is C.J. Anderson. So the Panthers ran the ball last year 493 times in 2017. That was top five in the NFL. A guy who's now longer there, Jonathan Stewart. He had 198 of those carries. So if we're just gonna talk about who's gonna replace those carries, you're telling me right now CJ Anderson's gonna get 198 carries? Yeah, I'll buy into that for a running back who's going after pick 90 in NFL drafts right now, fantasy drafts? Yeah, sign me up for that. Last year, CJ Anderson, I understand only three touchdowns, but over a thousand yards. How often can you get a running back who had over a thousand yards after pick 90? Not too often, that's just not gonna happen. And then you're just gonna look at the Panthers in general. I understand they just lost an offensive lineman, right? But Cam Newton, mobile quarterback. We say all the time, mobile quarterbacks help running backs. And then, yeah, okay, they just drafted Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey is a pass-catching running back, not a guy that we really need to invest in. For that reason, I love C.J. Anderson. He's a guy who you can get super late in drafts, and he's a guy who has a legit shot for 1,000 rushing yards. And he's my top sleeper this year because he's a guy who you're gonna look back on and say, yeah, that guy won me my league. But I gave you all five of my sleepers. If we could just quickly do a little recap on those guys, that would be great. Because these are guys who are gonna win you your league, fellas. Like, these are guys who are gonna help win you your league. And you have, you can see over there on the right, Naheem Hines. Then you have Frank Gore, Donta Foreman, Jamal Williams, and CJ Anderson. These are five guys who you should not sleep on. They could definitely win you your fantasy football draft. They could definitely win your fantasy football league in 2018 and they're all guys that when you're looking at sleepers like i said before sleepers are the guys who are going to win you your league not guys you draft in the first round so keep take a nice little mental note of that put that in your spank bank and those will be guys who you can you know roster bait to after the season is over fantasy football fans thanks so much for tuning in to fantasy football af i'm your host mitchell renz please follow me on twitter at mitchell renz 365 and until next time guys cheers